Welcome to Staffing Stories, hosted by Andy Moss. Andy has been in the staffing industry for over 25 years, first as a recruiter, then eventually an account manager and business owner. This is the podcast where we sit down with fellow staffing owners to get the real stories of the successes, the failures, and the lessons learned along the way. Welcome back to Staffing Stories, Mandy Moss, and I'm in my Christmas red. We're coming into the end of the season, so I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you're celebrating at the end of this year, please spend time with your family and remember those around you and um, try to recharge because next year's coming right around the corner. So this is going to be a different episode. Um, I had an unbelievable interview with Chris Drilla. Uh, president of North America Comrise, and I asked him to come back. And so I guess I didn't mess it up so bad because he, he agreed to come back and do it again. But you know, really what I want to focus on, Chris, was this, this thought about culture. And you have really used your career diving into this, and written a great book about it called We Culture. And um, welcome back. But I, I really wanted to start right at that. So first, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays for everyone who celebrates what they celebrate. And I hope they also get to spend time with their families. So, you know, the book that we wrote that I wrote was uh, We Culture was published in 2017. And the main premise of that book is that core values are driving behavior in a workplace. And what made me write it was is that so many companies have um, published core values that no one really even knows what they are. Yeah. So it's really kind of hard for those companies to drive behavior. So what I wanted to do was um, create a a vehicle where people can not only know how to come up with core values, but how to leverage those core values to drive behavior, to drive results. You you know, it's it's, everybody jumps in a boardroom and always let's go through exercise of what's our core values, what's our mission, what's our vision. And it's, it's a step further than just talking about it one time. It's living it. And, and that's where I think the rubber meets the road with some companies. They, they throw it up on a wall or a poster in the office, but they don't live it and implement it. And I think you've had success doing that. So what would you say to a company that's, you know, maybe struggling the same ways? Well, if a, let's say, assume that a company has defined core values that's struggling through it to make them real, right? Yeah. So if that company's struggling to make them real, the first step would be to have a kickoff to say why those core values are there and why they're real. And then it starts with everyone accepting the answer to the first question, who creates the culture? Yep. We all do, which means leaders are the leader of that culture because that's their job. But everyone has to embrace the core values and, and have them motivate behavior. So that's that's the first step. And, and then making sure as leaders, you're using the example that you're filtering your decisions through your core values before you execute to make sure that you're meeting the standards of your core values. Yeah. In meetings, and, you know, indeed. What we talk about in our, our employees is, you know, talent got you here, but your core values keep you here. And it's um, – when anytime I have a sit down with somebody who's struggling in our business, you know, we start at the values like, you know, are you meeting that? Because if you if you aren't, we've got a like a you know structural problem. Um, and 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 it, we start peeling it back. That's where you usually find the problem. But getting everybody to agree and row in the same direction is our goal as owners and directors of businesses. Can we get everybody focused and moving in the right in going the same way. Do you see that in some of the things that you set up with your organizations? Sure. I think it's super challenging. So I've implemented We Culture for customers and have also implemented it to organizations I've been a part of. And it usually always starts off with the same premise, right? Companies either don't have very well-defined core values or they have adverbs or adjectives that describe nothing that are their core values, so not actionable. Yeah. Right. And then when you get down to the brass tacks of knowledge at the colleague level, right, how many people can actually articulate what those core values are? That's where the 
that that's where the, the loss is because if people don't know what core values, we can't, we can't hope to execute on them if you don't know what they are. So that's yeah. the first thing we focus on. And yeah, you know, I find that when you start making them real, you know, the, the real part of it is that everybody, it has to start with everyone knowing what they are and believing what they are and being part of uh, selecting what they are. Now with you being a uh, international company, do you ever run into uh, just cultures are different? You know, the culture in China is different than the U S or the Philippines. How did you balance that? Or um, was that, a, I mean, what it may not have been a hurdle. It, you know, if you're not aware of it and embracing that it can be a hurdle, it will be a hurdle. Yeah. So we yeah. have, we have a way of looking at it. part of we culture is, is that when I go to China, I don't see Chinese people. I yeah. see people that just happen to be from China. They're people first that we all want the same things. We all want to be part of a successful organization. We all make a great living. We want to provide for our families. We want to be part of the greater good. We want to be on teams that win, right? Ethical people, you know, 95% of the population is wired this way. So if we embrace that, then the cultural differences can be the fun things we learn about each other, like food, language, um, holiday schedules, you know, and just certain business aspects of how things might be done different can become thoughtful discovery if we embrace that we're all people first. We have more in common with people from other cultures than we don't, and we should embrace what we have in common first. And that's how that really gets we culture going. And, you know, I've always loved diversity. I mean, if you, the more diverse your organization is, the stronger it is, in my view, you know, um, if you walked into the building, building and everybody's the, 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 you know, all male under 30 or, I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's, that's not a good spot to be in. But if you're male, female, married, not married, young, old, I mean, that's where ideas come, you know, I mean, not everybody from the walk of, same walk of life. Um, I think that drives a great culture and that's what I strive to do in my business. And I think most businesses, um, sometimes can get in a rut of like, this is the type person we hire and they don't get outside of that. Um, but I mean, it's, it's an exercise that I would push people to do is really um, research it, read about it, try to better yourself as, I mean, especially as I got older, the way I do business now is definitely not how I did it 15 years ago when I started. Uh, it's just, I mean, you evolve. So, so we have a strength in the U.S. market. It's one of the most diverse places in the world, right? And you're right. We could have a whole bunch of 18 to 22-year-olds running the organization if we were a fraternity, right? Yeah. Because that's who we're recruiting. That's our audience. That's our whole yeah. audience, right? But in the corporate world, our audience mm -hmm. is all the demographics. It's people from all walks of life, gender, race, color, creed, veteran, handicap status. They're all part of it. So if you have diverse diversity as part of your strategy in hiring, you're not just doing it to check a box. What you're doing is positioning yourself to be more successful. Yep. The companies that are more diverse are 30% more successful in their growth, in their hiring trends, and they have lower turnover than companies that are not because of the diversity ideas they, they bring in and because they have easier appeal to the market because of those internal diversity of ideas. And that's, that's a proven fact about companies that are successful through diversity. It's not just to check the box. It's about organizational success. And um, I think some people really, um, you know, this whole thing of um, diversity and, and not embracing ideas, it does not mean you can't establish core values in your business. And just because someone is a different race, read, color, or sex, can't still abide by that, the, this foundation of your company's culture. It, it just means you get better ideas, implementation to it. And I, that, that, that's important to me. And I think it's important to you. And I, I would encourage listeners that are struggling with this is to start looking at that as one of their steps to, you know, identifying issues and problems, but what other tips you would give to somebody, let's say January one, we get back in the office, um, and you want to tackle this, what, what, where would you start? So let's say someone doesn't have core values established or their core values are stale and no one knows what they are. I would sit down with my team and this is right out of the book, the how part. 
we'd sit down with the team and say, hey, let's create core values for the organization. And this is where you invite diversity in for diverse ideas. And you make them actionable. For example, we have a core value. It's be positive. It's not positive. It's yeah. be positive. It's telling you to take action and have a, have a positive outlook on the tasks, the goals, and the things that you do, right? So we look for people to come up with those core values. And what we do is we think to ourselves, what are some of the things we want to reflect to the market? And everybody makes a list. Then we look at the things that are repeated three or more times and we discuss them, the things that are mentioned. Once. We may look at those. We, we, and then we get down to three or four things that define who we are and how we're going to behave towards the market and also internal in our organization. And that would be the first thing that I would do. And once I had the core values, then I'd have a kickoff unveil it. I get a team slogan. Ours is together. We can. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that would be the first thing I would do come January. I'd have it done by January 31st. I, I think it's just great. But, you know, here's the the bad side of this. What's let's say you start implementing this and I'm sure you ran into this. Someone's fighting it. You know, they're just they're they're great employee, but they're just fighting this. Uh, what I call they're in the boat, but they're not rowing right. They're they're going against the grain. How, have you faced it? How did you overcome it? Because you know it's coming with somebody. You know, with any organizational change, there are going to be uh, people in the organization at all levels, by the way, that may not be on board. And that's a reality of any change, right? You could change anything anywhere in the world and that will happen. What you want to do is be inviting, be inclusive, and invite those people to participate, discuss it with them, understand where they're coming from, ask them questions, why they, how they feel about the core values, they feel like they're not aligned with their core values. And after you have those discussions, if that person can't come around, it might be best that that person find an organization where their core values are aligned. Yep. We Culture was born for me out of a failure where I was part of an organization for eight years where I was not aligned with their core values for how they conduct a business. Very successful organization, but in the end, I could not be successful in the long term because I had to be someone that I was not. Yeah. And that's why I left. And that's why I came up with We Culture. It was called Culture of We, and then it evolved into We Culture. Yeah. And I think with that, turnover goes down. If you can lot, give people a lot. That in, in our business, we, we face turnover big time in staffing and recruiting. Uh, but I do think that your culture can keep them and also drive them out. And sometimes, like you said, it's not the place for everybody. Uh, but it, that and that's OK. I mean, there is good attrition in some ways. And I just want to see this part through because people here, it's like, hey, it doesn't sound very we if you're inviting people to leave. Yeah. But you're really doing the right thing by individuals. If they're in the wrong place, they know it and they're not happy. And it's hard to make a change in an organization. And if you're having an honest discussion, you're not looking to injure them. As long as they leave, they have a reference, you have a good exit strategy so they can leave with dignity, mm -hmm. right? Let them go. Also, it contributes to retention because people see that the core values are serious and they'll follow them because you are committed to them as leadership, that you won't let people stay in the organization and be an exception. When there are exceptions, people say, well, if it's an exception for... Andy or Chris, it's an exception for Jane or Mary, then it can be an exception for me too. Why do I have to follow the core values? You got uh, If you set them, you got to start from the top and live by them. Well, this has been great. I, I really wanted to follow up on that from our first conversation. And this is, there's some unbelievable nuggets there that I know can encourage people going into this new year of 2023 that um, it starts with some of the, I call basics, the culture. And I, that's why I wanted to talk a little bit more with you. So again, thank you for coming back on for a second time and kind of deep diving, but um, have a wonderful holiday and, uh, and try to rest somewhere in the next week or so. I sure will. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and I wish all the listeners a very happy, safe and restful holiday with their families. All right. It's good to see you again. Thank you. The Staffing Stories podcast is brought to you by 3DIQ, founded by recruiters for recruiters. 3DIQ's industry-leading product suite complements your submission process in Bullhorn from start to finish and helps you deliver a cutting-edge customer experience. 
triple your placements with our powerful resume submission platform, candidate marketing, and client portal. Visit 3diq.com stories to learn more.